DuckTales Season 2, Episode 18. Happy birthday, Doofus Drake. So, um... The, uh, so... Goldie is, uh... She, she might have been blunted a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sharper than the Sharpies. Mm, not completely. But softer than the softies. <laughs> sharper than the Sharpies, but softer than the softies. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, to be honest, though, it's it's not terrible, so long as he, he knows what she's doing is the dark side of being sharp. Like, yeah. It's actually good to know the dark side of being sharp, you know. So you're, you, you're not naive about the kind of thing that other sharp people try and do. <laughs> um, but... Yeah. Another another doofus Drake, but this time we actually we were actually resolving his character a little bit in that now with Boyd in the picture, you know, he's um, not 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 quite <laughs> as in charge as he was. <laughs> I mean, it kind of makes you wonder why his parents weren't more in charge to begin with, yeah, as far that... as okay. Like, they clearly can take charge, yet they didn't before. Yeah, I mean, if I, it was... If I it mean, was I get they were using an excuse. If the, if they the, were using boy as kind of an excuse, but still. Well, if they if the money was the thing, which is the only thing that really changed, I mean, I guess having Boyd as a, you know, defensive sort of thing, but having Boyd also have the, the money that was what was holding them back if he was holding that over their heads i mean by all good reason you know even if grandmama gave uh gamimama gamimama that was what it was yeah gamimama had given the money directly to him and over and skipped over her own direct children and gave it directly to him it should have been in trust until he was 18 yeah. And then they should have been the administrators of it, so in 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 you know that may have also been a thing was they were trying they may have been in control but knew that eventually the money would go to him and they wanted to have money after he got all the money. Um so they were trying to keep him appeased so that when he turns 18, he doesn't uh, completely... Hello? Hello? Hello. You were, like, really breaking up for me. Yeah, it, it gave me a, a reconnecting, so maybe my internet blinked. But... I, I, I heard the robot on your end this time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Weird. Uh, but, like I was saying, <laughs> um, basically, if she had given the money directly to him and none for her own son or daughter, whoever, whichever side it was. Then maybe post when he gets 18 and the money becomes his, you know, they didn't want to be left out in the coals. So, like, they were trying to keep him happy so that when he turns 18, he doesn't just <laughs> abandon them. But with the money now in Boyd's account, with Boyd, then now they're not as worried about that so they're not you know they don't have to worry about him running off with all the money yeah but the problem with that is if that was their concern they should have been a lot lot stricter on him because giving him everything he wants like that yeah. does not make more generous it makes him more selfish therefore he is less likely to give them exactly anything but i'm not saying their logic was flawless just that that might have been their logic 
Yeah. I wasn't saying their logic was great, just that that was their reasoning. Working backwards from what they're doing to why they were doing it. Extremely illogical. Yes. It wasn't a good idea, but I can understand why they did it. I'm not agreeing with it, but I can understand why they did it. Um... <laughs> Uh, and all the the fake, um, the fake kids. It's like, can you really not, you know, not f like? I understand that the people involved are greedy, but like the, f but the fake kids. <laughs> you saw what happened to his last friends. I forgot. You, you saw what happened to Louis as a friend. And yeah. Louis tried to be his friend and he was kidnapped and like, you're my friend forever. Well, I mean, look what he did to Goldie. I mean, it's the same sort of idea. Well, yeah, but that's why he couldn't just have actual friends. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that these people were even trying it is a little I mean, I guess just there is no no bottom to the the greed of uh, um, of these characters it's like yeah you 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 gone yeah I, I don't think you're actually friends um, are you you're not an actual parent it's like I mean, Beaks probably had the best idea if you're going to try and do that. Because, you know, you Beaks can actually control it, but he just one. didn't do a good enough job programming it. He also yeah. was the only one who had the funds to do that. I mean, I well, knew it was a robot. Had... I knew it was a robot from the get go just by the uh, creepy family photos. Mm -hmm. Always staring in the camera. Yeah, well, and the fact that Beaks adopting somebody is not exactly a um, it's yeah, not it's something you would you would you would expect. I mean, other than for the That's clicks, right. you know, he might do it for the clicks, but the show wouldn't let him do that, and the people at the uh, you know, I, I wonder about the people at, at the, you know, the adoption, you know, agency. adoption agency looking at him and going, okay, resources we're not concerned about. We're not worried about, con you could fund this kid, you could fund several kids. Yeah. Your yeah, own narcissism? Probably a disqualification. <laughs> it was either going to be a robot or a clone. Now, a clone, that is a very Mark Beaks thing to do. But his, his skill set is in, in tech, not biotech. Technically, uh, his skill set isn't in tech. He steals other people's tech. Yeah, but he knows well, how to use to that tech. Prior ability. He has to have some prior ability with that tech, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's like, I, you know, if... He if I stole a, a, a surgeon's scalpel, it doesn't make me able to do surgery. Um, yeah, you can, just really badly. Yeah. I mean, he's managed to still run his company. He has to understand enough about technology for that to be a thing. And he knows how to hire and people because he, he hired... Um, oh, and he did face? design the thing to... That he did design the thing to steal Gizmo Duck, that little circle thing on his chest yeah he's yeah he's, he's got tech. enough of a tech skill set with programming and you know maybe a little bit of engineering that that's a very you know that's a very beaks way of doing it as a robot but if he was more yeah. biotech a clone doesn't seem something so weird for him because it's yeah. like as as the ultimate narcissist you know it's just like 
Oh, oh, yes, and now I have a me. He's a clone of me. <laughs> I need an heir. Make me an heir. Yeah. Um, yeah, but who would you have an heir with? What are you talking about? Just take my DNA and, like, replicate it or something. Duh. Um, that's not where babies come from. Yeah, but that's where clones say, come is... from. Make me... <laughs> um, but... Yeah, that, that, it was a very Mark Beaks way of dealing with this. Um... And Glomgold. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I mean, kind of... I'm kind of surprised she is smart enough to think of that. His greed knows no bounds. <laughs> and honestly, <laughs> if you wanted to get richer, all he has to do is go on a vacation. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, that would, you know, just leave uh, what's-her-face in charge. She's actually competent. And just, just, you have a lot of money, you know, a ridiculous amount of money, buy you a little island, build you a nice little estate on the island, and then just go there. And not be concerned yeah, with anything. But the problem <laughs> is, yeah, but the problem is he wants to beat Scrooge. Yeah. And he's obsessed with Scrooge. Yeah. I, and... I'm not saying that he would. I'm just saying that if he wanted to actually... He actually wanted to, to make more money than Scrooge. You know, doing that is <laughs> probably his best way of dealing with it. Because it's... You know, that would be the fastest way to grow his business is just taking his hands off of it and just letting people who are competent run it. <laughs> um. Yeah, but then he wouldn't have all the schemes. What about his poor sharks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. His wee baby sharks with laser beams. Um, but now what didn't make sense is that Llewellyn returned for Goldie. Well, what? he's got he's got Scrooge's heart. <laughs> you know, he may he may be, you know, trying okay. to be more Goldie like. That he, he wants to be sharp, but he's Goldie. still got gold he's still got Scrooge's heart. Okay, so... that he returned for Goldie with the gold. Yeah, that was I a mean, bit I of a problem. I would have been the gold, rescued Goldie, and then left. Yeah, I would have just, I would have dropped the shit off or had, you know, launch pad. Hey, LP, uh, can you uh, come pick up my shit? Thanks. I gotta go rescue Goldie. Yeah. <sighs> well, you know, and, and then. Good. No, I was just saying. I okay. gotta go rescue Goldie yeah. and then go save her. <laughs> Yeah, or wait till, you know, he's going to leave that room eventually, just, you know, when, you know, watch and when he leaves the room, when she finishes t telling him the story and he gets bored and he wanders off and nobody's bothering with Goldie, you just go, all right, well, nobody's here, shink, cut a, cut a hole in the, the box, let her out. He doesn't know who let her out, and so... He can't be, you know, I'm a gift bag back. You know, it's like, nope, sorry. You don't know who left. You, you and just assume that she got out on her own. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, assuming he doesn't have cameras. But, yeah, he, he snuck into less secure, to, to more secure places. Um, but, yeah, just... Yeah, just, oh yeah, you know. And besides, do you think Goldie couldn't break out herself at nighttime? Right. Yeah. All she needs to do is put out her holographic lipstick. But. 
I mean, how many uh, prisons has she escaped from before? And, and exactly. we get the, uh, we also get the excuse as to why uh, Della isn't telling him no to Golding, going with Goldie to Doofus' his party. It's like, no, she's busy with Huey and his radishes or turnips. Turnips. Or so, it was, um, it was turnips and another vegetable, rutabagas. Yeah, yeah, turnips and rutabagas, it's like, yes, this is perfectly, it's just XP is just off the charts, like, yeah, I could go over there, but I might lose all this XP that I've gained from literal farming, like, you know, in, in gaming terminology, you have farming, when you farm XP, you do something repeatedly to try and, you know, get XP out of it, so you can level up and do all the things you get from that get all the rewards from that and then you have um and he is literally farming xp and then just never spent any of it and so he finally goes and just the second he leaves just death death to his turnips and rutabagas and just like oh and uh and uh, huey Yep, he, 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 he loses it. <laughs> it's like, which it's it's perfectly understandable for for Yui's personality. I understand that. Just like, all right, I have meticulously, masterfully created this garden. It is beautiful. It is doing exactly what I want it to do. It looks exactly how I want to do it. You know. You know. And the second you turn your back. Boom, Newt. It's like trying to create order here, and you're just chaos. <laughs> it's over nine thousand. What nine thousand? There's no way that can be right. Uh. Also, the comment at the beginning: something is wrong here. Oh, that's really wrong, but nope, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, uh, literal storm in a teacup. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, literal literal storm. <laughs> that's a, tricky, but not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, oh, that is really wrong, but that's not what I'm talking about. But, oh, that's so wrong. <laughs> like ah there's what's wrong <laughs> the x is back yeah river's shown up again <laughs> yeah i probably ship them oh i <laughs> imagine doesn't? if there's if there's fanfics and there are i imagine that is a fairly popular ship whether it's, it's a flashback or just modern day they, it's not only shipped in fanfics, it is shipped in, like, roleplay, it is shipped in, like, everything. The only other ship that is as common is Glomgold Scrooge. Oh, God, oh. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's... <sighs> I, yeah. I am of the same opinion you are, but ugh, to each their own, I mean they even yeah. have a term for it I'm gay uh. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like you do you, mate yeah, or, with those or in the <laughs> uh, but yeah eh. yeah, I would have thought like, okay something cute and obvious like, I don't know, like Dewey and Webby, you know, that seems that's to be, another one. That would that, that seems that's I thought, pair up. yeah, that would be a pair up. Uh, uh, Fenton and uh, Gandra, Gandra, like that would be because that's actually kind of canon. It's not like we haven't seen them on a date since, but like it sounds like that would be a thing that might be happening in the background that we're just not privy to and. 
that would be a fine thing to write a fanfic about because it's an unexplored thing that probably won't get much exploration. It might come up down the line, but unlikely to be a real focus of an episode, given how it not only is it a secondary character, but it's the romantic relationship of a secondary character. Though it's been done before, but... Another, uh, another one, not as common, but is not as creepy, um, is Della and, um, Della and Launchpad. (laughs) The Launchpad always going like, wait, we're dating? Yes, Launchpad, (laughs) the tenth time. (laughs) Everywhere in every city he goes, he has to, you know, like they re- keep running into his exes, and they're each progressively more off the wall and strange than the one before it. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, that's one of my exes, Ninja. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, um, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Della versus the world. Never heard of it. No, I mean, the real movie is called Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and I'm saying Della vs. the World. Yeah. Still yeah. never or, heard of Where she it. has to, well, in the movie, uh, the guy has to fight all of his new girlfriend's ex. Okay, then. Yeah. And one is like, I mean, one is like a vegan ninja. Sounds a vegan like... ninja. Yeah, it sounds like he wouldn't be much of a <laughs> he wouldn't be With much of a threat. Psychic vegan powers. With what? Psychic vegan powers. It's a fun movie. You should watch it. No. Yeah, you. I'm gonna. Pass. <laughs> um, but yeah, anything. Anyway, um, uh, do we have any other thoughts on this one? Uh, I have seen uh, ships of uh, Huey and Webby and Yeah, those any of those and, three as a as like you and, know. and Webby and Lena. Yeah, I can understand that one. Like Webby with any of them, kind of makes sense. Though I think she, you know, I could understand the Lena one. I could understand the. Dewey one. The Huey and Louie ones aren't as... They don't make... They're not as good a fit, but I can understand them being there. Yeah. I agree. I mean... Teamwork makes the dream work! This has got to stop! (laughs) Uh, This has got to stop! I know, but they just can't stop harmonizing! (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, if they, you know... If, you know, if they were all, you know, if if you had a flash forward and it was, yeah, her with Lena or her with Dewey, okay, that makes sense. Uh, And I just, it came to my mind, like, how, you know, it can get, you know, fan fiction can get weird, but like, like, one of them ending up with a reformed, like, this whole episode kicks off a series of character developments and Doofus actually turns into somebody decent. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it wouldn't be impossible. No. But you would have to explain what he became and how he became it. It would have to be almost a completely different character in order to make it work, but... Uh, I actually read that the reason why they um, did that like that is because the uh, the guy who created it, uh, the reboot, does didn't like Doofus, like in the original. Yeah. So just made him a villain. <laughs> yeah, and then we're we're already starting to. He's already getting kicked into his reform cycle. Unless he backtracks. But it'll probably be a while before we see anything from him again. Um, 
Yeah, he's not in there very often. But anyway. And I mean, how often those reformations backtrack and are like, eh, I was good, but nah, I got bored with it. Yeah. Well, anyway. Any last thoughts on this one? Uh, Any last where can I go to a birthday party with bags of gold? Somewhere with, right? uh, with, you know, access of, you know, big machinery or an armored car because you'd need it to haul away all that weight. Those bags must be made out of freaking, I don't know what they're made out of. Because if those are real, if it's real gold, good gracious, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah, I, that would be funny. It's like, Yes, I'm ri- wait, this gold's foil. Wait, these are chocolate bars! <laughs> God damn it! Yamima Mama then, did love her chocolate. And then, and then Dewey comes in, oh, cool, can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> because we know Dewey is the one who's a, who is a bit of a sweet tooth. Yeah. And by uh. a bit, I mean... He likes to eat until he pukes. Anyway. Alright. 